Good morning. Welcome to Possum Trot Tropical Fruit Nursery next door to Monkey Jungle. This is Robert over yonder, not Robert is here. I have mostly <laughs> planted seed from things here through the years, which gives me the maximum variety, variability that God provided an avenue other than going through GMOs to get and you expand the season of availability because some are earlier, some are later. You can get different shapes, color, sizes, flavors, um, textures. I have juicy, um, mushy type jackfruit. I have crunchy jackfruit. I have some that are in between. I have one over yonder that is very much like probably the one they actually might have used for juicy fruit gum because everything turns to mush inside. Uh, there's just the seed and the mush. There are no rubber bands. Wow and the flavor is spot on. Is that a soft jackfruit then? It's a mushy. Yeah. Extreme mushy. I definitely love jackfruit. Porterhouse so. is a preference. You can look up and see one that's almost ready for harvest. You can see some that have just set and uh, some in between and there may or may not be fresh flowers. I don't now when you say you can look up and see one that's ready, are you looking for those spots in them then? Okay, what I do, come close and personal here, I look at a jackfruit as being a whole bunch of volcano mountains. And if you look at the mountain, you can see that there is a color change, like snow coming down a mountain. And when that color change, which can be brown, it can be tan, it can be paling light, it can be yellow, but they're and not evident on all of the mountains. But when it gets like halfway down, see the brown on that is halfway down, or further, it will be mature to harvest. You also jab the fruit with a knife or pruning shears, and when the sap comes out, it's often very thick and white and milky. Sometimes you can see it has separated into water component and a milky component. At that point, they are mature enough to ripen. Nice. Also, you can, uh, of course, go and squeeze, and when it's soft, it's ready to eat. Soft butter smell, then. And, or the smell. You can also, I'm not sure how they do it because this type doesn't really have it, but look toward the bottom at the eyes as they open. Okay. The Asians like to say, pick with open eye. But some of mine don't have eyes, like this type here. Uh, Does the know. stem color make a difference? If it and the stem gets narrower, and also this one leaf by the fruit will start to discolor and or turn yellow. Wow, so that so little those guy's are the sure? variations that you can use to try to determine if and they are ripe or mature, I guess I should say. Nice. Have you found a way, have you tried where they to try to drain some of the sap out? Like, I did mention that earlier. You cut and the sap comes out and then if it separates in components of water and sap. Right. But do you do that on purpose or you usually just You do it before it? you cut it with the pruner ships. Okay. And that's why you often find a big puddle of latex at least when okay. the jackfruit from here. Jackfruit 20 feet in the air. Wow. It's like a uh, third world country here guys. You guys feel like you're in Costa Rica? Yeah, a little bit. Yep, picking in the woods. Oh my god, jungle. <laughs> the uh, anaconda in there, be careful. <laughs> we got iguanas down here, we got parakeets. So we're going the Joe we're going into jackfruit land from what I hear. Said it was uh, beyond walkability. We had to get on the truck. This place is unbelievable. Whoa! <laughs> hey! The mosquitoes aren't as bad as they were yesterday. Seedling starfruits, long ends. Can't even identify. Oh, more mangoes. I can't identify half of this stuff. There's another long end. It's like a giant allspice or something. More mango. Avocados. Camito. Get some camito. Uh oh, we got bananas back here in the jungle. I smell the jackfruits too. <laughs> We're, you know you're getting close to jackfruits when uh, you can smell those bad boys. Some, is this some sugar cane or what? Nice banana rack up there. Bananas up here in the jungle. All right, he's getting out. Because they just eat everything. Yeah. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Squirrels. Like I say, 102 dead in a month, and we're still. Oh, wow. Wow. Before that, there was 200 this year, so we're up to over 300 squirrels dead this year. Anybody eat them? Uh, the the cats. Um, what variety of bananas are those? Roger Curry. Nice. I don't know. I have a little knife on the dash, and maybe we can salvage something. But boy, they have torn that up. No line. Wow. You squirrel tree hugger, you people. <laughs> Not a lot of squirrel gumbo going in there over here, huh? Raja Puri, that's a good flavored banana. I've never seen them that small. Might be the true Raja, huh? Legit. We'll share with the squirrel on this one. And they taste like a whole big banana flavor in one little mm. bite. That was delicious. All right, we got a uh, a bomb shelter. You want another one? Eric and Wilma moved okay. the tree over. I had a backhoe and I needed rocks for the driveway, so I dug a hole under the tree and set the tree up. There. Are you joining them? No, I'm moving this so you can film. Oh, I don't know if I could see anything. I would love to film it. Well, keep on going down. We'll pull you out. The tree above us, oh, man. by the way, it's not built for six foot six inch. <laughs> Dude, it's cold in here. Is it cold? You got yeah. the geothermal temperatures going yeah, like on? I could sit in here all day. Wow. Oh. That's pure coral. So the nuclear apocalypse comes. This is the place to be, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome truck. We got bomb shelters. No snakes. No snakes. All right, I'm going down. It's very cold in there. I want to see this. That's my three to four. Three to four. Oh, I'm going to say, wait, stop, stop. There's one tree I don't want to pick the fruit off because there are five different trees here. Okay. okay. Anything on that side, on that branch, will work. This branch, no. This one, right? You're saying, yeah, right. You're saying on this area? Yeah, on this branch, yeah. Okay. This and off the ground. You just eat it like an apple? apple? No, you have to break the skin. Oh, yeah. There's an interior. Yeah. Yeah. Have a nice okay. So what is this, Robert? This is the Bacuri Pari I know it as. It's the Aridia macrophylla. It's grown from seed from Trek. By the way, did I tell you they cut their trees down for whatever reason? They're oh, crazy. Oh, no. <coughs> you saw them? Everything was cut. Oh, this was up by the lab. They cut the tree down. Oh. Uh, I got the last fruiting off of it. I planted the seeds in the nursery that was that used to be a greenhouse. And let me show you a possible better way. You cut them around this way. And also, you see the yellow sap? Very astringent. You mix it with turpentine, and it makes a yellow varnish. Hmm. And then they open up. Oh, beautiful. Like a sugar. Wow. Mm -hmm. Not at all. There's three well, big I mean, seeds. Yeah. And then you the just get that part out and eat the pulp from around the seeds and we'll put all the seeds in a bucket. But this is the, it's as close as I can come to a mangosteen here. Are you selling this tree right now? No. no. Is this different from Achachairu? I don't know. I know it as uh, just trying to go through the literature, the Bakuri Pari. Let me give you a bucket here to put the seeds in. Did you say Matt, you how are they? I haven't tasted one yet. Has anybody had one yet? No. no. Who just my <laughs> uh, fruit Hunter, have you had one yet? Yeah. How is it? They're good. One to ten. I got an eight and a half. Mm -hmm. I'd give it an eight. Yeah. That's, That's good. a pretty good rating. That's pretty good. If it were sweet like this other one that I'm not letting you have, it would be a 10. But it's not a, a 10 based on, uh, the mango scene would be a 15. Mm. What's the, the other one? Still filming? Yes, I sir. I also grow a thing called Canistel and or the uh, um, Bac Bactris gasipes, the um, peach palm. Nice. Those can be fed to chickens and the egg yolk goes off the scale up to a bright red. Really? It's like a 12 or a 15 on a uh, 0 to 10 scale. Oh my god, that sounds amazing. So this is the seed bucket, huh? Mm -hmm. Root stock. <laughs> I did, but they all died. Oh yeah. Malay apple. What are you working with? Malay apple. Cubans love them. They need to ripen. These are not, but these will be on display at Tasteably. Tasteably. 
wax jam boo. Related to the wax jam boo. Okay, nice. Melee apple going in the truck. We are getting loaded down. What's ripening back here? We got a couple of mangoes. All right, we're loaded up. Some monstera, some mountain soursop, some passion fruit. I even have fruit on the Malabar uh, chestnut up there. Malabar chestnut. How cool is that? All right, we out. Leaving Possum Trot. We're heading to uh, a Vietnamese farm down here, probably getting some lychees and loquats. Been an exciting trip. This is our last day here. We've hit USDA, Trek, Fruit and Spice Park, a couple of nurseries. Pine Island Nursery was the biggest one while we were down here. Ran into our friends from uh, Mooney Farms last night at the brew house. We are at Schneebly's Winery, kind of checking that place out. And we've got one or two more stops and back to Tampa we go. So it's been fun. See y'all back home. Pretty much got no blood left in our bodies. We've all been sucked dry. I'm, uh, I'm covered in mosquito bites. I got bumps all over my hands, all over my neck, my ears. Um, it was a pretty light year for lychees. Didn't get any longings. You know, mangoes could have been better. Manian's driving over here and uh, leaving through the Everglades. So um, it's a nice little getaway. Getting back for Father's Day. So can't complain. It's good. It's uh, four o'clock on Saturday. We're out. So onward to the edge. Next excursion's coming. This is where they found the ghost orchid. This is where Clyde Butcher's, uh, I believe it's like a, what is it? Gallery. Yeah, it's like a gallery. This guy's a famous photographer down here. But there's a bunch of cheeky camps out here. You know, Native Americans have camps all the way along the whole ride. So there's no power. They're all running off generators and pumps. Pretty cool. So, see y'all next time.